Welcome to Young Life Perception Podcast, folks. The podcast dedicated to the youth. I am your host, Stephen Quinn. You can find me on Twitter at Caddy Quinn. That's at C A D D Y Q U I N N. Now, today's topic we're talking introverts versus extroverts. Cody and I will be providing the extrovert side, and Dalton Sweet joins us on the podcast to provide the introvert side. That's right, introverts versus extroverts, duking it out right here on Young Life Perception Podcast. Adjust your volume, get comfortable, and let's do this like Leroy. What's up? We made it, Young Life Perception Podcast fans. We're here. We're in the building. We're so glad this ended up working. Oh, it took forever. Oh, my God, dude. We were about to punch each other, throw our laptops off the table. I'm just glad that we're actually going to start talking about introverts versus extroverts. My God. (laughs) Man, we've been doing this for probably like three hours three and a half hours trying to get all of this stuff set up we started at like five and it's like what eight thirty something like that yeah and Man. we've been down here for probably for like two and a half hours trying <sighs> to figure out how this thing works because we want this to be on Ustream live we want it to be recorded mm-hmm. so we're gonna start recording on audacity too <laughs> can't believe i didn't do that but (laughs) (laughs) whatever we're making all sorts of rookie mistakes over here it's okay though that's how you learn we'll be all right introverts versus extroverts we're live cody how do you want to start this well first of all we should probably talk about our facebook our twitter our social media pages we can talk about that basically what we want you to do don't mind the dogs barking (laughs) someone's here um Basically, you can follow us on Twitter, at Team Young Life P. We all, we've also been working pretty hard on the blog. Mm-hmm. That it, we post twice a week, and we're going to be posting today or tomorrow when we upload this podcast. And yep. it's all, the blog is also going to be introverts versus extroverts. Yep, it's going to complement this podcast. It's going to make it real easy. If you don't catch everything during the podcast, just take a glance at the blog. There's a table in there, some pictures to help you understand. Yep, and Good that's stuff. at younglifeperception.wordpress.com for the blog. Um, all the podcasts are uploaded at www.younglifeperception.com. So don't mind the uh, camera messing up every once in a while. We don't have the highest of quality of equipment <laughs> here. It's true. <laughs> as unfortunate as I mean, as We it have is. nice mics and things like that, but we don't have the greatest laptops in the world. So... It's definitely not a MacBook or anything. No. <laughs> so it might glitch up every once in a while. We're, but we're repping Dell and HP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, man. So we got to start talking about what extroverts and introverts even are. Um, basically, the angle we're taking on it is from Myers-Briggs personality type indicator. Uh as many people know, you get four letters assigned to you, and this is the first one that people have to figure out when trying to figure out their personality type. It's extrovert or introvert. So most people ha- probably have an idea of what extrovert and introvert is, but a quick rundown. An extrovert is somebody who is focused on the outer world of activities, places, things, events, anything in the external world, and that's what is what recharges them essentially it makes them so that they have energy to go on through their day whereas if you go to somebody who who's introverted they're going to be more of the type who lives and prefers to think about their inner world of thoughts and feelings and memories and it's just a completely different focus of energy so extrovert is focusing energy to the outer world introvert is focusing energy to the inner world yeah and you've told me that before when Mm -hmm. we've talked about introverts and extroverts i think yeah when we did the personality podcast you guys can check that out if you don't if you haven't checked that out already um 
I remember you saying introverts focus on the inner world and, mm -hmm. and extroverts are more focused on the outer world. Right. And that's why sometimes I stay pretty humble and I'm like, I'm not even going to try to go into huge detail about what introverts can do because I'm sure there's introverts out there can blow my mind oh, yeah. on the things that they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. So Definitely, man. Thanks for the rundown of introverts and extroverts. Yeah, not a now problem. Now we can move on with the rest of the show. One thing that I do want to cover before we move on, in this American society that we live in, a lot of times people who have an extroverted nature are rewarded because they have the ability to network with several people, and that's typically something that people look up to. If you have a big social circle, a lot of times people are going to flock to those kinds of people. So, you know, our society rewards that, but there truly is no better type introversion and extroversion are just preferences and some people are going to prefer the inner world some people are going to prefer the outer world just because society rewards something and acts like it's better does not mean that it is perfect you're basically saying that um because society is more extrovert than introvert it doesn't mean that that's actually the right way to be exactly i mean the only thing it can make it it can make it seem like it's the right thing to be because everybody's going to succeed if they're extrovert, I guess. If you're in an extrovert-type world, it's going to be easier to 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 fit in mm -hmm. an extrovert world if you're extrovert. Yeah. So that's why sometimes introverts feel, you know, that the extroverts have an advantage, I guess, mm -hmm. versus them. But it's really not the case because introverts are very smart people. Oh, yeah. Just as... And They're it's just sad. as smart as extroverts, too. Yeah, it's, it's not smarter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's sad, too, because you have a lot of people who have an introverted preference. When they go into a job interview, they are more than capable of doing the job. And they might even be overqualified. But if they can't impress that person that's interviewing them, if they don't have the social skills to do that, a lot of times they're written off and they are not remembered because they fit in with so many different people. I just can't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the notes or nothing. Doesn't matter. I'm going noteless, son. All right, so maybe we won't take this one down? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even care. I don't either, dude, honestly. If people don't want to watch it, they don't want to watch it. Let's keep going. Where are we at? <laughs> All right, well, we just got done talking about what extroverts and introverts are, and... You know, we are both extroverts. We communicate in an extroverted way on both ends. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's good to understand how these types of people interact with each other. So we can go over how an extrovert interacts with another extrovert. And we can actually have the listeners try to point that stuff out while they're going through and listening to our podcast. Because you're going to see these cues all over the place. Because that's how we naturally communicate. Mm -hmm. So we can go over a few of those. I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, that would help. It, it's something for them to look for while we are talking, while we're communicating, because we are both extroverts. Right. So if we let them know, let the fans know what they can be on the look for, look, look out for, then, you know, it kind of creates a fun little game for them to stay interested in this podcast, I guess. And now that they can actually see us, we can even reveal things that we might do um, visually as well. Yeah, for sure. Body language. Yeah, definitely. Well, one thing that people are probably going to notice is that we sometimes stumble over each other in our conversation. We'll be talking, and then we'll both get an idea, and we'll try and shoot it out, and they just kind of interrupt each other. There's a lot of interrupting that goes on. And yeah. we don't see it as being rude because extroverted people think out loud. They literally will think out loud, whereas an introverted person is more of the type to think things through. Keep, kind of keep it to themselves. Don't really talk about it with other people. It's keeping it inside and solving the problem in there, whereas we need to talk through our problems and kind of surface the opinions of others so that we can learn what's best for our situation. Yeah, and I also, this wasn't on the list, but I thought um, there's times where you'll say something, and if I don't interrupt you, I'll say something that was added on to what you were saying, but it, I won't be able to fit it in as well as I, 
I would have been able to if I would have interrupted you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's always that urge to interrupt you because right. when you're saying something, I have an idea and I need to throw it on and add it on. And if, if sometimes if I don't come out and say it, then just lose it. I lose it. It's <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, I mean, another thing is loud volume, the voice, voice changing. Um, we're very animated. Mm -hmm. Extrovert people are, are very animated. And I'll, a lot of times when we're doing podcasts, I'm going like this. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at you. I'm doing visuals the whole time. So that's what's really great about being um, on video. Yeah, and also being somebody with an extroverted nature, there we go off on a lot of tangents sometimes. Like we can end up somewhere where it doesn't even make sense. We started talking about one thing and it led to something that is totally not even connected whatsoever, but it's just because we're thinking out loud and when we're discussing things, it's us thinking out loud but at the same time. So it just shifts our attention to so many different directions. And what's crazy is that extroverted people have a preference for the external world, the outer world. So they are better at looking at people doing something that they don't like. And when they spot that, then they can see it within, the, within themselves. But an introvert has the ability to look deep within themselves and find flaws and openly admit that to themselves so that they can fix that. So in a sense, you have extroverts who need other people in order to make improvements to themselves or to see things that they don't like about themselves whereas introverts do not yeah they can look at themselves and improve that's why i will never be able to um look at myself like an introvert yeah i'll never be able to go as deep as they can go right on themselves i mean if i want to go deep on myself i have to go look at other people right and then try to compare those actions that they're doing to what I might be doing mm -hmm. and there's a lot honestly that's really good way of looking at it because I find myself a lot of times either whether it's on Twitter me reading statuses or seeing people or just recently in Big B um, a lady and her child were in Big B and the lady's ordering a coffee right mm -hmm. and the child runs over and just spills beans all over the floor coffee beans oh. the mother goes <laughs> oh. and then just like gets her coffee and walks out and i'm looking at her like you just showed your child that they don't have to clean that up right like if that was my child i would have walked over there and been like can an employee give me a broom please i'll clean this up even right. if the employee was like you don't have to and I was just like, no, no, I insist. And then I, I, I'm showing my child that you clean up your messes. Yeah. And it's like, when you look at people, you, you see what the, an extrovert sees what they do. Mm -hmm. And then they, they like compare themselves to that. Yeah. And I find myself doing that all the time. Right. Whether it's like someone posting a status complaining about something, I go, I don't want to complain mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff. So right. I relate it back to me. So that means an introvert can think of those scenarios, scenarios, or however, however you want to say it, and they can just look at themselves. And I mean, I'm traveling on a ground that I have no idea about yeah. introverts. I'm just trying to explain it the best I can. But they can take those same situations and not have to look at them in the real world. Mm -hmm. They can just look at themselves and they'd be like, this is how I act. Mm -hmm. is that is that pretty much what yeah it is? like more of a self-awareness almost yeah because introverts do prefer that inner world of thoughts memories ideas feelings so they spend a lot of their attention in that spot so it's only natural that they're going to gain a deeper sense of who they are by focusing on that all the time yeah i i guess i've never thought about that because i think every time i think about what I do in certain situations, I have to relate it back to when it actually happened mm -hmm. in the real world, like in a situation with somebody else. Yeah. I can't just be like, I don't even, I can't even explain it. Yeah. And what's crazy is I serve tables and you get some difficult people mm -hmm. and it used to be, I would go up to a table and I would s see them as a table that I need to make happy. And if they don't show me the same 
I guess you could call it extroverted signs that I show to them. If they wouldn't show that back to me, I used to think that the table didn't like me. But there are people with an introverted preference who don't show that much emotion, mm -hmm. who don't show you know, those kind of gestures the same way. They aren't interested in small talk. It's, and that's what it is. When I try to make a table comfortable, I want to make small talk, but then there's certain people who don't want to do that. And when I try to do it and they don't engage in it, it can seem unfriendly to me. But that's just them being who they are. That's a great example for uh, communication with an extrovert versus an introvert. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to talk about that a little more later. Yeah, that's actually a really good example for that. For sure. Um, did we cover all the communications of extrovert versus extrovert? Yeah. Yep. Listen for the these when... Fast-paced conversations. A lot of out loud thinking. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so next on our agenda is... Is Why it's so motherfucking cool to be an extrovert. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's actually very ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you blew out the speakers, Cody. You blew out the speakers. <laughs> oh, God. Louder volume of voice. I'll point that one. <laughs> That's called being an extrovert, yelling right. into the mic. So, so basically, when we told them to keep an eye out for things that extroverts do, one of them is raising the tone of their voice, a.k.a. Cody yelling into the mic. Screaming <laughs> without even meaning to. <laughs> so we want to talk a little bit about what the advantages of being an extrovert are. We'll also cover some disadvantages. The advantages, obviously, are society does reward that, in our culture anyway. Society rewards people who are extroverted, who have a large social circle, and the people who can network well, the people who can get stuff done by networking with different people. For some reason, we just think that's so cool. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's cool, but at the same time, being an extrovert, you sometimes will stomp on people's feelings without knowing it. Because if somebody has an introverted preference, the inner world is the most important thing to them. They have to sit there and actually think through something before they can tell somebody a decision that they make. And sometimes if you're an extrovert in a conversation with somebody who has an introverted preference, they are going to be quiet and the extroverted person is going to be like, okay, what's the answer? And they're just being quiet. As an extrovert, you just want to talk, 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 talk think out loud, whereas an introvert wants to think it through inside of their own head. They don't want your words interrupting their thoughts. So, and that can happen. I, I just thought of something like when, let's just keep it as boy and girl schools. Mm -hmm. Like if you send your child to an all boy school, they don't know how to interact with, with the girls at school. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like if it's 60 to 70% extrovert, it might be rare to find someone who's real introvert. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to communicate with those people the right way, and we're not educated on this kind of thing. So, right. we have, so extroverts have no idea how to communicate with these people. So to a lot of extroverts, introverts are just people that sit in their room and shelter themselves from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And now you have an introvert that just wants to keep getting away from extroverts because they don't understand how they work. Right. So it's just like, exponentially getting worse yeah. because extroverts don't know how to com communicate with introverts. They don't understand introverts. Right. And th I guess that's the way I see it is like you, sp you're not, if you're not exposed to it a lot, you wouldn't understand like how those people work. Right. So I can see more introverts getting annoyed by extroverts. Right. And if you Definitely. look online at extroverts versus introverts, you'll see proof of that you'll see a lot of articles written by introverts saying, look, this is what this means. Mm -hmm. It's not what all these extroverts are saying it is. You know, it's, we're, not, we're not trying to be antisocial and shy. Like, we just need to get away. Yeah. And to them, that's, that's what is most comfortable, and that's the right way for them. Mm -hmm. And we, don't, we think differently. Yeah. It's amazing how if you studied you know, personalities, you, honestly, you can probably say this has already happened to you, but you start to understand people on a deeper level. Way deeper. Oh, and, yeah. And you finally get to actually say, I agree to disagree. Like, yeah. That you can't even say that unless you understand personalities, technically. Right. And I found myself in a lot of those situations just being like, he's probably introverted. 
like just all right end the end the end the conversation like yeah. it's fine let him have his alone time let her have her alone time and i can accept it because i know that's how they think right it's i don't have to sit there and worry about whether or not my girlfriend is you know igno- want and ignore me and doesn't like me anymore mm-hmm. that's a that's a real life situation right there between an extrovert guy and an introvert girl right definitely so that's the way i see it anyway. yeah for sure but we kind of gave you the advantages of being extrovert i mean if i could think of any off the top of my head real quick honestly the biggest advantage is what we covered like it, living in a world full of extrovert or the united states at least yeah i think um japan is more introvert if i read it correctly yeah, um, they There's pride the, themselves on being introvert. Mm-hmm. Actually, I read online. So, the United States we're talking about is is more extrovert. So you definitely do have an advantage, right? And I mean the other the other personalities play a role in it too. It's uh, honestly it seems like I have to compete with other extroverts really. Yeah, like, who's more extroverted? Right, and sometimes that's how it plays out. And it's just it's just so messed up the way it is because mm-hmm. everybody's equal if you were to take away all the money that has been created by us and all the businesses that have been created by us <laughs> and you just put everybody in a forest they didn't have any of this technology everybody would be equal it would be survival of the fittest just like out in the wild and you would actually need everyone yeah it's the you illusion would need everybody's peace yeah to survive and it's the illusion that is created by society society can point its finger at somebody and say this is what's expected and this is what's good and other people will naturally follow and it i i it's definitely very difficult to not be biased towards other personalities Mm -hmm. like even if you understand like we do Mm -hmm. sometimes it's you have to catch yourself like saying something that might not be true about them. Right. Like you're 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 being general, I guess. Like you're making a generalized statement mm-hmm. about them and and it might reflect my personality as an ENFJ looking at someone like a traditionalist. Sometimes I catch myself saying, you know, I don't think traditionalist is the right way in certain situations right but a traditionalist is going to say the same thing about you yeah that's what you have to remember and yeah and that's that's why i catch myself now is because i'm like they're thinking they're right too yeah it's like you can't it's something you can't convince people that you're right about and you can agree to disagree always yeah you just got to learn what their strengths are and what your strengths are and just put them together right that's That's all that matters for sure so advantages vast of course see there's me adding more bias in there uh what are the disadvantages well Well, see knowing knowing that we're two extroverts it's going to be very difficult to come up with some disadvantages of being extrovert this would be a really great stomp well we said it about stomping on people's feelings without knowing it sometimes well yeah i mean we can come up with like easy ones but i would really love to hear an introvert side to this yeah for sure that would that would we would probably be blown away right i We'd, would love to hear there it might though. even be some that might upset us right huh <laughs> who oh, knows well. so disadvantages well i mean it, a lot of the communications we talked about could sometimes be a disadvantage me interrupting someone all the time could turn them off to me right exactly and interrupting people especially if it's in a setting that isn't appropriate and you just misread the situation you interrupt the wrong person and that could ruin an opportunity you know Mm -hmm. because it only takes one person for you to get somewhere that's way further down the road in life than you thought you'd get to it could be an interview it could be one interview and you could make one mistake and accidentally slip up and interrupt them and they could be like i don't like that person yeah you know, because that's just how people are. They see one thing they don't like in your first, you know, hour or two of interacting, and that can turn them off to you completely. And in an interview, that's, you know, tops usually 20 to 30 minutes, mm-hmm. you know. And in that short amount of time, you don't really want to find, you don't want them to find any flaws in you, really. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I'm trying to, it, technically, no one should really have a disadvantage. Right. Like right now, we're just kind of telling you what could be if you don't understand yeah. that you're yep. extrovert, really. Mm-hmm. Like it could be a disadvantage if you don't understand 
that you might be doing these things. Right. Like if you're in an interview and you're constantly talking about small talk, like that's something an extrovert might do. So mm -hmm. if you understand that that might be something you can that you do, you can easily stop it that much more. Right, for sure. You just have to understand what it is that you have. Yeah. And then you will know when to shut up, when to actually be diplomatic and use tact in what you say. Yeah. A lot of extroverts are... Sometimes extroverts will talk without thinking because they're thinking out loud. So the people who have the thinking process inside of their head that nobody hears, sometimes that just kind of leaks out of an extrovert's mouth. It wasn't supposed to come out, but it did because they're just thinking out loud. Yeah, so and there it, might be times where I just say something disrespectful and and I couldn't catch it. Yeah, you know? it's like sometimes I don't even realize I'm thinking out loud. And it's like Yeah, like when you caught me earlier when I was talking to myself. Yeah. On like, my computer. Yeah. <laughs> like what and you called me out on it. I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. Extrovert bitches. I see I'm having a hard time coming up with disadvantages because like I don't I mean, I guess I could well, look I guess at other a extroverts. Big, like, you think that you're the best, I guess. Yeah, disadvantage. When I stay home for a full day, I start to feel low energy. I start to feel depressed. I start to feel like I need to go out and do something. Yeah, you know, that actually I, is a, a, a disadvantage. Yeah, and when I have homework and when I have, you know, this stuff to work on and I have a whole bunch of stuff I have to do around my house... It's like sometimes there are just days where I'm home all day and I don't see anybody. Like my girlfriend goes to work and I stay home and I work on stuff here. And then it's just like, damn, I want to go somewhere. Like it I actually like kind of depresses you. Yeah, a like bit. drains me. It really does. Yeah, there's I it, when you said that, it actually like made me remind it like reminded me of when I was in high school and when you have to be at home. Mm hmm. Maybe younger than high school, too. Maybe, like, 15 or 16. Those were some hard times for an extrovert, man. When you're sitting at home one night. It, I remember those nights where you're just like, it's Friday. Why am I not out Right. with my friends? Right. Partying. And I'm, like, 15. Like, And it happened. Even if it was one Friday night where you didn't go out, yeah. you still get pissed about it. Right. That could be a disadvantage. You get mad at your parents. You get mad at... Whoever is not letting you go out, you're getting mad at yourself. You're just beating yourself up because you have to stay in one night. You know? Yeah, and that's, now... That's an, extrovert disadvantage right there. And another disadvantage, in my opinion, is that let's say you do get a very busy lifestyle and you get a job that doesn't really have you interacting with a lot of people and you just go home every day and you get set into a routine. Well, you're not seeing all these different people to spot out flaws in them so that you can see them in yourself. So if you aren't interacting with people and you're an extrovert, chances are it's going to be hard to see the flaws within yourself. And if you choose to not see those things, you're choosing to harm yourself because that'll carry through into the rest of your life. If you can spot out a flaw that you have right now and then start to work on it and then fix it, it's going to make you more well-rounded and it's going to make you more successful. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, like, the workplace disadvantages would be if you're stuck in a spot, like you said, where you're not able to communicate with your coworkers or anybody else. And I quit the warehouse job, like, quick. Mm -hmm. I was there for a month, and I was like, this is depressing me more than, you know, just washing dishes and being able to communicate with people. Right. Because I'm staring at a machine yeah. with earplugs in, and I'm not – and it's for 12 hours. Like, I wasn't talking to anybody. I could work 12 hours, and, and I don't care if my feet hurt, things like that. Right. Like I work hard. But something was draining me, and it wasn't that. It wasn't the work. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out because back then I didn't, study, I didn't study anything about personalities. I didn't know I was an extrovert. Right. And now that I think about it, it's like that's what was draining me. And mm -hmm. I remember I kept looking outside. I kept looking at the one small window they had, mm -hmm. and I kept looking outside, and I just kept working. I was like, man, I don't know why this is so depressing, but it is. That could be a disadvantage. You Definitely. could be in the wrong job. You could be yeah. in a job that separates you from everyone for yeah. a long period of time. And a lot of people, they like to go for the jobs that will give them the most money, but if you're an extrovert and you go for a job that pays a lot of money, but you're cut off from people, you're going to have a lot of money, but you'll be depressed. Yeah. And that's just how it goes. I was getting paid really good money at the warehouse. Yeah. Nothing was worth it, man. Yeah. It, it still sucked. Right. Um, what are some things we wish we were better at? 
I wish I was better at not having to have people to look at to look deeper within myself. I mean, yeah, I think that's the one thing that I would want. Yeah, because it seems it's very useful because I'm all about self-improvement and I'm all about several different kinds of things. But I literally, I learn everything from the external world. I don't typically look inside of myself and try and find flaws because the way I think is that I'm going to spot flaws out in the real world and they will get exposed eventually because I'll see it happen. Yeah. But if I wanted to just look down into myself here's a perfect example i uh, like i said earlier i was i'm a server and there was this girl that was waiting on me at a restaurant that i went at and or went to and i was sitting at this table and she dropped off our food after we got our order and everything and then she never came back to the table yeah. and so i walked up to her and I was trying to get her attention. And when she saw me, she had this look on her face like, oh, shit, I forgot. And it was really quick. It was just a quick micro expression, but I saw it. And then I thought about, have there been times where I made that face? Because I know I forgot about customers before and they saw me and I had this feeling. And I realized then and there that she had that same exact feeling that I've had before, but it's only because I saw her facial expression. And that's the only reason I knew that I made that same exact facial expression that she did. Yep. I've done that plenty of times and I've looked at people cause I've had waiting positions as well. And I I've seen that kind of stuff happen. I mm -hmm. see that kind of, you know, being a person who looks at body language a lot, I see that stuff probably every day. Mm -hmm. And Maybe that's why I'm better than I thought at reading up, reading body language is because I'm the type that learns from people. Yeah. So, who knows? Um, things we wish we were better at. I mean, I, honestly, I would have to agree with what you said. Yeah. Because I, if, if I had the power to look at myself like an introvert does, I feel like I'd be a lot better at some things than I mm -hmm. am right now. And I actually have to go out and look at the situation happening with someone else in order, before I can learn right. about it. So if that situation ever happens to me, I can't just out of thin air make it up and, and look at myself mm -hmm. and critique myself. I can't do that. So, I mean, I don't even know how to even start with that. Like, I don't, yeah. I mean, I can look at myself, but even when I do that, I have to look at situations right and that, compare it to that that's definitely. the only way like here's a guy that does that maybe i shouldn't be like that that's how i look at things mm -hmm. i can't i can't even maybe i need to hang out with more introverts so they can show me how to do this yeah because i mean you can practice that so who knows maybe i could learn that stuff on a small scale i guess yeah how are we recharged and energized this is i have a perfect example for this I don't really go out a whole lot. Every once in a while, I will, obviously. And it's crazy because I will go out to a party, even if there's only like six or seven people there, maybe eight people. And I will be there for the whole night and, you know, we'll have a few drinks or whatever. And I could have got up at like eight o'clock in the morning. And so I was at this party and usually tops, I'll stay up until like two. But after this party, I got home. And I was up until like five o'clock and I wasn't tired at all. <laughs> Not at all. I've had some of those situations. And it feels like I was just energized by the environment I was in. And it's just crazy because I just, I just was not tired at all. Yeah. I mean, there's some situations like if I'm playing, um, Xbox live, no, I'm not a nerd, but <laughs> sometimes I'm a nerd, but I actually like playing it more when I have a bunch of friends on. And it's like when M Monkey and Dalton and all of them are playing with online and communicating, it's like sometimes actually just talking with them is more important to me than just playing the game. Sometimes I'm more focused on the conversation mm -hmm. than the actual game. Right. You know, and it, and I can, it seems like I could do that forever. It's like, I'm not playing the game forever. I'm talking with my friends forever because mm -hmm. they're not there right then. They're not, you know, in the room with me. One's, you know, in Georgia. So it's like, 
when I'm doing that, I'm actually recharging myself. Mm -hmm. I feel energized. And when I quit that, I go on to the next thing, and I'm actually kind of productive after that. Right. So, I mean, that's what, kind of what energizes me is just communicating with people. And that's probably the same for a lot of introvert or extroverts. So basically, coming up soon, we have a clip of our friend Dalton. Steve is asking him some questions. It will be the perspective from somebody who actually has an introverted preference. So kind of like what we were talking about earlier, getting some input from somebody who actually lives this life rather than just reads about it and is actually an extrovert. Yeah. Like we I do. thought that would be a great thing to do for yeah. the podcast because we're both extrovert, and we probably talked about... <laughs> 45 minutes or so, maybe 40, on mm -hmm. extroverts. So, you know, we could keep going, yeah. honestly. Oh, we could give sure. you a whole bunch of examples about extroverts, but, you know, and give you our take on introverts. But every time I say the word introvert, it kind of slows down right after that. It's like, yeah, introverts are like, well, they're, you know, uh, and it just slows down. But when I talk extrovert, I can just keep going. Right. Because it's what I am. So I'm asking Dalton a bunch of questions you can follow him at d sweet tweets but he'll mention that and basically what we're going to do before we play the clip is we're going to give you some signals or some signs or things that an extrovert and an introvert would do in a mm -hmm. in a conversation i guess so yeah. that way you guys can kind of interact with it and and try to find some of these clues i guess and i mean that that's actually a great way to practice because mm -hmm. you can take what you learned here and pretty much do it in the real world. Yeah, and look for at sure. How people communicate. Who knows? This might help someone with their girlfriend. It could. And see, now we talked about how extroverts interrupt other extroverts, but that happens. If you see an uh, extrovert and an introvert talking, you're going to see the extrovert talking probably about 70% of the time, and if not more, because introverts usually sit back. They absorb what you're saying. They reflect on it inside. They don't need to think out loud. And sometimes that can be looked at as almost, uh, almost an uncomfortable feeling by an extrovert because they are sitting there trying to talk and the introvert is not saying anything back. Yeah. I mean, sometimes introverts will actually be... They'll, they'll seem rude, but they're really not because right. they'll just flat out tell you, like, hey... I yeah they'll just not give you really any responses and yeah extroverts like to dominate conversations they like to interrupt um and my point is is like extroverts they like to engage in small talk and introverts do not so if I was like hey you know I'm not even gonna say it because Dalton's gonna let us know in the clip but, right for sure um basically extroverts can small talk for three hours and introverts don't want to small talk at all. Yeah. And they'll they'll just sit back and kind of, I don't really know what goes on in their head. I, sometimes they're listening. They're probably taking. I'd say a good amount of the time they're probably listening. Yeah, see, it's just not a being biased. But if, if someone is chatting, if an extrovert is chatting an introvert's ear off, I can see some introverts just tuning that shit out. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, man. If I was an introvert, I'd probably go into my own little world and be like, just nod my head the whole time. Right. Be learning something in my brain. Right. While they're talking. <laughs> For sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, the next one is ideas have to be drawn out of an of an introvert. Mm -hmm. um, you have to ask stimulating questions, deep questions. Not just a, small talk. Yeah, as an extrovert. And, you know, I've had experience with that, too. Now, st after studying extroverts versus introverts, I've understood that you have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that by communicating with introverts yeah so there's some more I'm, that's pretty good honestly um let's see there might be some more actually uh i guess i mean yeah they're all kind of the same extroverts like to be the leader of the conversation yeah it's pretty much you know self-explanatory let's listen to this clip that you have we'll yeah, start playing about that right now 30 minutes long so yeah here we go boys ha 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 I'm Stephen Quinn, and I'm here with Dalton Sweet. Hey, Dalton, tell the folks where they can find you. They can find me. Uh, are you talking about like a Twitter or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm at D Sweet Tweets. 
That's my name. That's pretty Twitter. clever. <laughs> so they can find you there. So we can have yeah. a bunch of creepers that listen to this podcast follow you there. Yes. All right, and it's awesome. sweet as in like sweet. <laughs> Two like hotel suite. All right, man. Sometimes that gets people get mixed up with that. <laughs> I always, I always actually do a D sweet and then I add W E E T S and I forgot the extra T <laughs> and then it goes to some weirdo. <laughs> it's like, yo, dude, check out this video. And then I find out it's not you and I'm like, shit, I gotta go edit yeah. it. It's probably like a porn site or something. <laughs> probably some random guy in Australia. Yeah. But basically, we have you on the show so we can talk to you about extrovert versus introvert the reason why we brought you on is because Cody and I are actually both extrovert so it wouldn't really make much sense for both of us to talk about extrovert versus introvert I see when we're both extrovert and sometimes it can get kind of biased so we decided to bring you on because you like podcasting and you're an introvert indeed right <laughs> The guy who likes to sit back, listen, and analyze everything. So yes. feel free Have, to be laid back about it, and you can crack some jokes about extroverts if you want. I don't really care. Okay. I do the same <laughs> shit. Target would put me in positions where I wasn't around any coworkers. Okay, because you were isolated from other people? Yeah, and I realized that like I worked so much better when someone else was there and I could talk while I was working. Yeah. And it's like... Most jobs are, no, you can't talk while you're working. Like, no. And what they don't realize is, like, I actually work better when there's someone, you know, there talking. I mean, I can work and talk at the same time. Yeah. So what what would it be like for you if, let's say, reverse it. You had to be around a bunch of people you didn't know. Let's say your job's, like, answering inbound calls or something, and people are just constantly calling that are strangers. I mean, after eight hours, what am I going to do? I'm probably just going to go home, relax for a couple hours before I do anything. I just got to gotta recharge. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's what we all kind of do, but do you feel like it's dr more draining than, let's say, a job where you just have a couple coworkers that you're with all the time? Yes, definitely. Because, I mean, the job I'm at now, I'm with, like, 50 people a day in one building so I mean you know some of them and then some of them stress you out and oh, okay. at my old job it was just me and like one or two other guys and we were moving furniture and that was fine like I had a blast doing it it was hard work but I enjoyed actually working because I got to hang out with this these cool people and just have fun for the most part I see so it basically it wasn't draining for no you. it that's what I like. That's the word I like to use. Is like, if you're an introvert and it's an extrovert type place mm -hmm. or environment, then then you're gonna get drained from that. Yeah. As far as I understand, from introvert and extrovert. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, um, I was doing some research on it, and I came across this thing where they think that uh, what introverts have that's different, like in the brain, is they're more sensitive to dopamine. Introverts are? Yes. So when they get certain amounts of dopamine and they get too much, they become exhausted and just their brain gets fried. I and see. Extroverts can, can take more dopamine. If I just do something that was really exciting for me, and it, it gives me like an adrenaline boost. I want to go out and I want to celebrate. Yeah. Or I want to go out and just party or like hang out with a bunch of people or, or do something crazy after I do that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really think of a good example. I guess when Cody and I did the personality podcast, yeah. we were really pumped about that. And then we did a blog that went with the personality podcast and that was a huge step for us we put in a lot of work for it so when i got that all finished and i posted it i was just so happy that it was over like maybe a huge quiz you take or a huge exam or a project yeah. when you completely you just want to go yeah you just want to go wild and go outside yeah. and like meet everybody that's how i felt 
Like mm-hmm. that was me being an extrovert a hundred percent. Yeah. So when you complete a project or a test or an exam or something that you've been working really hard on, what do you yeah. tend to do afterwards? I mean, I feel the same way as you. Like I, like I just got done with like a big test and so I wanted to go out and I, I would go out, but it's just like, I feel like introverts, they have like a, just a certain tolerance. Like they'll, they'll go out for a couple hours and they're good. You know, I like see, they're, I okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy with what I've done. I want to go home and just intake of what I just did. And then an extrovert would probably just be like, no, I'm going to keep partying for a couple more hours. Yeah. As long as they can. Mm-hmm. Where an, I see an introvert going home after partying and, and just sitting back and I guess internalizing everything that just happened mm-hmm. and thinking real deep about all the stuff that just happened. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, sometimes you just, just I like, okay, that was cool, but you know, I can just sit back and like hang out with some, some close friends or something like that after the party. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's what I enjoy more than the actual party. It's yeah, like the party's fun, but then you get to go back and just sort of, you know, kind of relive it, kind of like uh, just tell stories about what you did when you were there. I see. So that actually brings up a really good point because I'm more of an extrovert person, mm-hmm. but my dad's very introvert. So there's times where I, I act a certain, I act introvert, I guess, but. Okay. I'll find that I'm not, I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I want to do something better. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be sitting at home and going, ah, I, want, I only want to go to parties with people that I know. But really I don't. I want to go out and party with a bunch of people because that's yeah. what an extrovert would do. But I'm acting like my introvert father. And none of them's right or wrong. It's just mm-hmm. if you're a certain way, you should try to be that way. Yeah. Because that's what... I guess makes you in a better mood I guess Mm -hmm. so there's times where I act very introvert and and that's usually most of the time when I'm going out or hanging out with friends or going to a party I usually want to be with a close group of friends oh yeah definitely but the thing is is once we get there it switches to extrovert so it's like I act introvert until I get to the place till I (laughs) It's like a, like a trigger. Yeah, a it's, yeah, it's like a comfort zone, really. Mm-hmm. It's because my father was introvert, so I, I probably learned off of him growing up how to act. Or I, I yeah, think, he's, yeah, I so think you kind of his tendencies. Yeah, I think you kind of go off of your parents, even if you don't mean to, because mm-hmm. you watch them as you grew up. Yeah. So your mind just kind of was like, oh, this is how you do things. And it's almost, it's actually subconscious because I'll be like, I don't want to act like that. You know, that's not me, mm-hmm. but I'll act like that. So you <laughs> have to kind of figure that out. And I yeah. started realizing, like, what if someone had a severe case of that? Like, what if somebody was, it could be any, any way. It could be they're very introvert, but they live in a household where their whole family's extrovert. Yeah. And you know, the family forces them to be on the football team and be popular and go to parties. And, you know, they don't force you to go to parties, but they could force you to go to family events and things like that. Yeah. And huge family events and, and go into, I don't know, anywhere, concerts. Like, your parents can influence that. Mm-hmm. And he could yeah. be a complete introvert or she. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and, well, I mean, in my family, I got two two younger brothers, an older sister and a younger sister. And for the most part, I'm, I'm the only extrovert or introvert, I'm sorry. And they're all extroverts. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like whenever I'm with them, I get a little more rowdy. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Not rowdy, but yeah. more. Yeah. You're comfortable with your family. You know, I lived in yeah. a very introvert family. So there was times where I'm like, why am I sitting home right now? You know, <laughs> I need to go up and do something. Yeah. So it's yeah. things like that. And it's like, you didn't, you don't know how to act like an extrovert, I guess. Is mm-hmm. what it is. And if you can figure out how to be an extrovert and, you know, you can figure out how to be an introvert, I feel like your life would be a whole lot better. Going to the movies or sitting at home and watching movies? Which one do you prefer? Yeah, I like... I, Which one I do like, you like the most? 
What? Which one do you like the most? Uh, I like I like going to the movies better. Really? What if yeah. the, what if the theater is really packed? I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I hate going to like opening night of movies. So do I too. It's I like mean, it I, just I ruins the whole too. movie for me. Guess that's not a very good question because I hate that shit too. <laughs> that's the worst. Do you think that the world is fit for extroverts? Do you think it's mostly extrovert? Um. How do you feel like about I, other people? I mean, I feel like it's mostly extroverts because extroverts are the ones that are out there doing stuff. So it seems like it. You know what I mean? Like. Extroverts are out talking to people. They're out doing things. They're the ones you see. There's the one. Yeah, exactly. They're the ones you see. And Me- then, meanwhile, Albert Einstein sitting in his house creating, yes, amazing it, formulas and that <laughs> save the world and shit. Yeah, and Abraham Lincoln's trying to abolish slavery. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the world really would would be, it would be, catastrophic if we had all extroverts or we had all introverts. Yeah. Nothing would get done. I think they have to coexist, and if they don't work, they just work together. And if that doesn't, if that's not there, then the world's just a big shit can of of chaos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't go anywhere with any, you know, technology or anything like that. Exactly. Like we wouldn't have any good books. That's for sure. Because <laughs> I cannot sit down and write a book. I would much rather say it on a microphone. Yeah, I could write a book. I hate reading. Well, I don't hate reading books. I hate investing myself into a book. And then, like, halfway through it, I'm like, you know what? This really is a covenant. (laughs) (laughs) I can't read this anymore. I can't. I hate that. (laughs) I don't know if it's my attention span or I just lose interest in it. I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, that's the hard thing. That's the hard thing about introvert and extrovert, just talking about that specific thing. Because Mm -hmm. all the other three letters, sensing, intuition... Uh, feeling, yeah. thinking, all those play a role too. Oh, so, definitely. So, so I wonder what it'd be like for introverts without internet. <laughs> Dear God, I I just thought about that because <laughs> it it seems like in internet is a way for introverts to kind of still communicate with people. Like mm-hmm. we play on Xbox Live all the time, but yeah. yet you're still allowed to be you know, kind of in your room and in your own space. Yeah. Or like texting or things like that. Mm-hmm. Seems like all those things were developed for introverts. It's almost like the guy who invented internet's like, this is to save all introverts. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy who invented texting's like, dude, it's an email it's a mini email, but it's for extra or introverts, you know, so we don't have to talk to you a whole bunch. Yeah. It's like just say what you want to say. Yeah, well, and I can read it whenever like, I want. I don't mind getting on the phone. It's just I don't like talking on the phone for extended periods of time. Yes, yeah, there, there's something that I remember you saying that you said, <laughs> what was the longest phone call you had? I can't remember what it was. You were it saying, was like two hours. Really? Yeah, but it was, a, Co- it was a good friend of mine. But Yeah, see, Cody and I have two-hour conversations like once a week. I mean, yeah. yeah, we're trying to run a business and things, but there's times where we just call and we just talk about things. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's about mind blowing things. You know, and then we can just sit, we both can just sit there and talk and talk and talk and talk. Yeah. Because that's actually recharging our brains, I guess, because we're both extrovert. Mm-hmm. So. And, and that's what I think about introverts is like conversation. I think that kind of, you can tell if you're an introvert or extrovert. Because I think. Introverts are like, okay, I'm going to call you, skip all the, the bullshit, I don't want pleasantries, don't ask me how my dog's doing, just tell me what you called me for. Nice. I'm really you know? glad you said that. Because <laughs> and I, I don't mean to be rude if, I'm, if I call you and I just skip all the stuff, I don't mean to do that, but I called you for a reason, and this is what the reason is. Nice. I'm kind of glad you said that because I was reading online extroverts versus introverts, mm-hmm. and it did say that introverts do not like small talk. No. Where extroverts could small talk forever. Yeah. And, I mean, we might seem shy, but if somebody came up, like if somebody came up to me, oh, hey, how are you doing? Well, how about this weather? I'm just going to be like, yeah, it's something, huh? 
But if somebody came up to me and was like, hey, man, did you see the new Dark Knight movie? I could talk to you all day about that. I see. You just got to, like, kind of pick your spots. <laughs> I see or what you're saying. You just got to kind of draw me in somehow. You got to get me something I'm interested in to talk about. Something that has a point and it's deep and you can talk more. Exactly, yeah. More about it, I guess, more details and things like that. And not the small talk. That's cool because I was reading that online and I, it kind of, it's funny because when you read something and then someone actually does it or se- if somebody else says it, it kind of like makes it permanent, I guess. It's almost like you write, when I learn something by reading it online, it's like yeah. I'm writing it down with a pencil. Anybody can come in and re- erase it. But as soon yeah. as someone actually does it in the real world or like somebody else tells me it, Mm-hmm. What I just read, it's like writing it in permanent marker. Like now, my brain understands it. Okay, it's yeah, kinda I get what you're saying. Think about, but that's kind of cool. I mean, yeah, and I mean, I'll I'll do small talk, but if if I do small talk, it's like a friend, and I actually am interested in what they're doing, what they're what's going on with them. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, well, I mean, and I, sometimes I feel bad because my brother, he's the biggest extrovert of anybody I know. Yeah, he's pretty and, extrovert. <laughs> and he'll call me and he'll be like oh so what's up and I'm like what do you want <laughs> <laughs> like sorry but <laughs> that's kind of that actually helps me understand introverts a lot more cause you're, you're already so. like you know I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or anything but when you guys call me like you understand that it's a world full of extroverts and you have to act a certain way mm-hmm. like if it was a world full of introverts I wonder what it'd be like it would probably. I don't know. <laughs> there's some. There's some mindgasm for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to think about that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you do. You need to take it in and think about it for a while. And I'll get back to you in a couple of days. We kind of covered this, but I I did say. How how does it feel to be an introvert living in an extrovert type of world? Like we know it's fit for extroverts, but. Is, yeah. the, is do you have any specific examples of when like you've had problems or anything where you just been pissed off? Um, I know the biggest problem for introverts is extroverts are always like, "Come on, man, stop yes. being antisocial. Let's go party." Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and you have friends that constantly say you're being antisocial. Mm-hmm. Because you're not yeah. going out and partying, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes people think like, I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, I think that people think I'm weird because like, I don't know, like I'm always sort of distant. Yeah. I guess, but I don't, I don't know. I think you're more rounded out than um, most in- well, not I shouldn't say most. There's some very introverted people. Oh, and yeah. And I think yeah. you're more rounded out than mm-hmm. some of the introverts because when when we go to a beach or something, it's a big group of friends, and you act totally normal. Like, you act extrovert. So, oh, yeah, definitely. So, and, I mean, I guess that's because you're with close friends, and probably all extroverts with close friends probably act like that. But we're going to places where lots of people are. You mm-hmm. know, I, we went to the beaches – Things like that. We went to parties, things like that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I love going out. I do. But just probably not as often as other people. <laughs> so here's a situation for you. I call you up. I'm like, hey, man, we're going to Grand Haven. You want to uh-huh. go? What goes through your head? First of all, it would be who's asking me, but it was you. Okay, cool. So Else. number one is who's asking. So yeah. if it's a close friend, I'm probably going to say yes just because I'll, I'll feel comfortable with them. And that was my second question. Am I going to be comfortable with this individual wherever I'm going? Okay. And then, uh, the next question was, who else is going to be there? Are there going to be people that I, that I feel will irritate me? I see. Or um, if, they're, if they're going to be people that I don't know and I'm going with somebody I don't really know, I'm probably going to say no. <laughs> because I don't I don't want to go into something that I don't I'm kind of blind I don't want to go in blind but if it was like if it was you and you said yeah some of my friends are having a party 
and I said, who was, who's going to be there? You're like, you don't know. I would still probably go because I trust your judgment. You okay, I, mean? I see what you're saying. What if it was like, hey, man, you want to come out? We're going to go to a big frat. I don't know where at. We're just going to walk down the road and just show up to places. I, I would still go. Really? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe that's just... I think that's just growing up in kind of an extrovert world. Like, you're comfortable with all that now. Yeah. So I think you're definitely more rounded out. Yeah, I mean, the first time somebody asked me to go to a frat party, I was like, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) But after a couple times of asking me, I was like, all right, yeah, I'll go, I'll go. So when you're at the party, what do you tend to do? Um... I mean, think I'll back go. to when we were young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and reckless. Ah, uh, back in the days. No. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I would socialize. Yeah. I, I would go dance, but. What I'd about have a frat? To, to go dance, Fr- I would have to be. Kind I'd of have, a, have to have a little bit of liquid courage, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> liquid courage. Liquid courage. What about so the like if it was a, <laughs> I'm the best. What if what if it was like a frat? Are you the one that goes and sits down on the couch and sticks with the friends or would you wander off? Um I would I mean, I would probably stick with my friends, but knowing them they would probably go wander off, so I'd be with somebody else wandering off. Yeah, see the thing I thought about is like I think it's safe to say that, well, besides Colin, you're probably the only introvert within, like, Monkey, Mark, uh, I don't know, Dylan might be, I don't think Dylan's Dylan's an introvert, I would get him an introvert. Really? He is? Yeah, yeah. You're pretty good friends with him, too. I just think it's, it's the culture we grew up in, that introverts are more rounded out, and I feel as though the ones that aren't rounded out are the ones that are posting all over Yahoo Answers about <laughs> being sad. So it's just like, hey, man, you got to study about yourself. That was kind of mean. I shouldn't have said that. But that, hey, good. that was good. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just being laid back on this, folks. <laughs> They're all no, over the, Yahoo wait, Answers. I'm trying to say it in, like, the best way. It's just yeah. I feel... There's a lot, when I look around, there's a lot of introverts that are like, I don't understand, you know, I'm, I just want to go out and hang out with my friends, and they keep bugging me and telling me to go out, but I just don't want to, and it's making me upset, and I'm just like, it's because you're an introvert, like, you need to learn that you're an introvert, because yeah. it's, there's sometimes where I wish I was introvert, because sometimes I just want to sit down, like, when I'm doing homework, for example, mm-hmm. I just want to get up and go do other things. I want to go outside. I want to do a bunch of crazy stuff. And it just happens to, you know, all flare up right when I sit down to do my homework. (laughs) The only place I can actually get homework done really well is at a coffee shop or the library because I don't, I feel like I'm kind of strapped to the chair. Like, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, there's no alternate distractions. Yeah, so... When you're doing homework, did you did you find homework to be easy? Like, did you are you the type that sits down and just busts it out for like two hours, solid work? Because mine's like three hours, but it's on and off, so it's really not three hours of work. Oh uh, no, I would. Yeah, I definitely like when I do homework. It's like, all right, it's what seven o'clock. I'm gonna just sit here. I'm gonna devote two three hours to this, and by the time that's done. I'll have afterwards to do whatever I want. So just just sit here, get your shit done, and then play times after. Oh, okay. What about when you're actually doing the homework? Do you find yourself, like, checking out other things a whole lot, or do you find yourself pretty focused on your homework? Uh, I'm pretty focused. Yeah. If, if it's something interesting. I mean, <laughs> there's another factor, the fact that homework <laughs> sucks. Yeah. But mine's really bad. I'll sit down and do homework and I'll find myself on, you know, looking at crazy videos on YouTube and then getting up and doing my laundry. And then I realize oh, an hour just went by and I only spent five of it on my homework. <laughs> yeah, that's so what I would do for like math. But like, 
when it came to like writing papers and stuff like that, I could just sit there and go all day. Oh, okay. How I would feel recharged going out and hanging out with friends. He feels recharged when he finally gets to get away from work and go to the library for eight hours and just mm-hmm. in the peace and quiet. Nobody's bothering him and he gets to, to learn and read and work on whatever he has to get done. Homework, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would do too. Like you can like my family used to have like this joke that I never came out of my room. <laughs> Ah, see? Because I always just, I had everything in my room, and even when I got food, like, I'd buy food, and I would, like, stock it up in my room. <laughs> and i just sit there, and I'd watch the History Channel or whatever. And, <laughs> <they're> like, <laughs> oh, funny. wow, he's out today. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, that's crazy, because I would do that, too. I would stay <laughs> in my room, but I never felt good about it. <laughs> That's what's weird. It's like, I'll stay in my room for a really long time and work on stuff. Uh-huh. But the whole time, I'm like, this sucks. You know, like, but I do it for some reason. So that's yeah. when I started to realize, like, my dad had a lot of influence on how I act. Mm-hmm. Because he's very, very introvert. And now I act like that. I still do it, but I'm not, it's not what I want to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of weird, actually. Because I'll just sit in my room and sit on the computer and do stuff for, you know, three, four hours. Yeah, it's like you're conditioned to do it or something. Yeah, that's what it's it feels weird. like. And it's kind of messed up. And it, if someone doesn't understand that, I feel like they could get kind of depressed from it. Because there's times where I have to sit back and be like, whoa, I need to go out, hang out with people. Oh, yeah. To recharge myself. Yeah. So, honestly, personalities, I one of the best things I've ever come across no doubt yeah they're, they're really interesting to learn about mm-hmm. you, you can i mean you can make a living of just learning about personalities that'd be awesome yeah too. there's people that have done it <laughs> so i mean it's definitely the most beneficial thing i've come across mm-hmm. lately so i mean it does it helps with a lot of things like just dealing with people you're like man why is he doing that and then you're like, oh, okay, well, that's probably his personality type. He doesn't mean to do that, but he does it. Yeah, and then you get to that point where you learn about it really, really well that you go, <laughs> this is happening to me now. It's like you, you understand it on a, a level like just above other people are normally at. Yeah. So it's like you go online or I'm answering questions on Yahoo Answers or things like that. And all these people are just like, I'm INFJ, I'm INFJ, and all these people are saying it. And I realized that everyone's saying they're INFJ. And that's what I got, too, when I took one of those online tests. Oh, okay. And it's like, I think it was the first one I gave you. Stay away from humanmetrics.com, folks, because it sucks. Pretty sure the name is right. But, Human Metrics. I think I took one on there, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I gave you that one. And then yeah. I found out, I'm like, this is garbage. <laughs> Every single person that took it, I swear, got INFJ. And it's funny because that's the rarest type. So everybody's going to feel great after getting Yeah, they're going to feel special. Yeah, and everybody's writing blogs like, I'm INFJ, woo, rarest type, rarest type. And I just want to be like, dude, you're probably not INFJ. And it's not like, like based there's on, a winning personality or there's a losing personality. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's the thing that people need to remember is like, there's no right or wrong. Like, yeah, it's cool to be rare, I guess, but, I mean, you'd probably actually be happier if you weren't the rarest one. You realize that, right? Like, the winning one is the majority, (laughs) technically, (laughs) to most people. Yeah. And just write, like, this very fancy extrovert-style blog post that's just oozing extrovert. And they're like, I got INFJ, woo I'm just like, dude, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because I don't know you, but yeah. I have a strong gut feeling you're not <laughs> INFJ. <laughs> yeah, I guess all my... 10 of you are INFJ. I have a feeling about eight or nine of you, so maybe all of you are wrong. <laughs> I have such a like stereotypical view on INFJ. It's unbelievable. It's just like I just picture this mountain with this little cabin on the top of it out in the middle of nowhere and just some guy like with papers all over the place 
<laughs> like writing a book about something, like writing novels and things like that. Yeah, like, uh, like Lord what's of the his Rings. Johnny Depp from the Secret Window. Yeah, that's the movie I was <laughs> thinking about. Yeah, that's what I. That's my stereotypical view of an INFJ or an introvert <laughs> or any introvert really. <laughs> like a well, not any hardcore introverts. That's what my stereotypical view of them is. <laughs> and it's always kind of fun to just joke around about it. As long mm-hmm. as you're not serious about it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if e- the way I see it is if everybody understood personalities, it would actually probably suck because I shouldn't say understand because people would learn it. They just wouldn't understand it. Okay, and I, yeah. I thought about it. It's like if everybody knew about it, they wouldn't take it to the next level like maybe you, me, or Cody would do. Yeah. You know, you have intuition, right? What was your letters again? INTP. INTP, okay. Yeah, yeah. You might have to look at that again, because I don't know if you're INTP. <laughs> if I had a guess, it would be INFP. You think I'm a feeler? Yeah. But that's no, all I think. No, we went over this. We went over this, dude. Because <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, because that's where I got stuck. I am... I, I knew for sure I was I in, and then I didn't know if I was a thinker or a feeler, and then I knew I was P. So I, w- I wasn't sure if it was INFP or INTP, and I took so many tests, so many Dude, tests. Dude, you have to discover to it, it for yourself, man. Honestly, this was a really great podcast having you on, Dalton, because, you know, I got to actually see the point of view of an introvert. And knowing Cody and I, we would not have been able to, I guess, replicate or even try to teach an introvert style on our podcast because we're so completely extrovert. Yeah. So it was actually really cool having you on the podcast. And I'm sure it's going to like encourage more people to listen to the podcast knowing that there's going to be a, an an introvert personality on it. Oh, that'd be, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, I, I mean, I enjoyed doing this. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I had a good time. 45 minutes. Yeah, felt like it was five a good minutes. 45. Yeah, and I got an introvert to talk the whole time. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I, I mean, that was kind of quiet, sort of. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not the talkative type I pick, guy. I so. picked your brain, man. Picked your yeah. brain. Yeah. Once and, again, where can the folks find you? At D Sweet Tweets. Yeah, that's what's up. Oh, shawty. TM, right? <laughs> I'm sorry? TM, copyrighted that? Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> what about what about big things in the future? Got any big things that you want to share with the folks? It's going to be permanent. Um, I'm trying to get a podcast going with a buddy of mine, Dylan Wolf, and you. But, uh... I don't know how well that's going to go. So. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> no keep <one> <laughs> we'll, we'll keep trying. We'll we'll keep trying. You also have yeah. the get you also have the uh gaming commentary thing. Uh yeah. It's a uh, just for fun. Uh, yeah, it's definitely just for fun. What um, if what if people want to check that out? Where where should they go? Oh. Do you know? It's the uh, Double D versus the World. Oh, okay, on YouTube. On YouTube. All right. Yeah, I can post a link to that probably. And um yeah, the last video we did was a. I I feel we ended it just. It was brutal. It's a brutal ending. <laughs> yeah, Let's so basically, say, that's a good. Something gets ripped out of a human being, and and it's a lacrosse game for crying out loud. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Dude, you basically just created a gap of knowledge. Not everyone's gonna go go watch that. So, <laughs> thank you for Hopefully that. They do. This was a great podcast. I'm glad you came on the show. Thank I'm sure you. Young Life Perception fans enjoyed having you on the show. And well, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm a big fan. So. Hopefully we can get a lot of downloads and show D Sweet Tweets some love, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to end the podcast right now. <laughs> Peace. Peace. What's up? We're back. Sorry that was a long time. It was. What's funny is I actually took out a lot on that podcast. And I actually had to... Um, talk and try to influence a discussion 
with mm-hmm. with Dalton, and that's just you know a classic example of extrovert and introvert communicating. Yeah, for sure. So, so I was looking at this. I wasn't really a part of this whole interviewing process. Um, we had a checklist that we went over before we actually watched the clip or listened to the clip. If we go through our checklist, we said extroverts interrupt. I heard that several times. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it, we, man. <laughs> extroverts try to engage in small talk, but many times introverts are not very into the small talk. And I noticed that there was a point, I don't remember exactly what it was about, but it was almost like you were trying to engage in small talk. And he almost it almost sounded like he didn't know how to respond to it. Like, this is not something that I want to be talking about right now. Yeah, and for someone like me, it's like, it's I can pick up on those things, but I can't I can't stop myself from small talking. I can just like I can't stop myself from starting it. But when I get a reaction like that, I can stop. Like mm-hmm. I can just be like, all right, stop. Yeah. And go on to the next thing. Yeah. But it's like I have to keep trying to tell stories and trying to ask questions to try to dig and pick, as I said, his brain. Yeah, and I definitely, definitely saw ideas being drawn out. You really did lead the conversation. Obviously, this is our show, so it makes sense that you would lead the conversation. But as far as looking at it as an extrovert and an introvert, I also feel that you led the conversation. And it was, like Dalton even said in his own words, you have to draw thoughts out of me. You have to say something that like sparks my interest. You have to do things like that. And I saw that. That's what you were doing for almost the entire podcast. It was, uh, you have to pick your points, Mm -hmm. he said. Yes. And you have to say, you you have to talk about things that are going to interest what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And if if you understand those simple things, you know, your conversations go a lot smoother and both parties are happy. Yeah. And I noticed too that your style, the extrovert style, is more of a, a fluent, rapid speech, kind of just go on for a really long time. And then I noticed Dalton would, you know, pause here and there. And he would think about what he was going to say. And then he would always, you know, spit out what he was meaning to say. It just sounded like he was thinking about it a little bit more as he was saying it, rather than us who just blurted out. <laughs> and keep going, really. Just keep going, yeah. yeah I guess we're meant to podcast, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, for but, sure. But, I mean, he <laughs> does have very good thoughts. Definitely. And that's, oh, yeah. It's like very articulate thoughts, and, you know, it. I just lost what I was going to say. That happens to extroverts every once in a while, <laughs> but, hey, <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if I keep you know, delaying what I'm going to say. If I keep adding fillers like I'm doing right now as an extrovert, I might come across that idea again, but I didn't. So I'm going to stop. So in conclusion, (laughs) basically people have different ways of communicating. That's what we wanted to get across in this podcast. Sometimes you're going to communicate with somebody and they're not going to communicate back with you in a way that is appealing to you, but people are not put on this earth to make you happy that's something that we have to remember and that's oh what, man giving it to him blunt <laughs> and that's uh, that's what it truly is be you don't try to change yourself for other people if they don't like you for who you are chances are they might not be fully educated un- yeah they yeah. might not fully understand personality exactly types what you, you know? are i mean you don't have to fully understand exactly what somebody is but you can get kind of a general idea about mm-hmm. how people are and we just explained to you what an extrovert versus an introvert would be like. Mm-hmm. And now that you have this knowledge, you can understand that, hey, that person's not maybe ignoring you or not engaged in your conversation because they don't like you. It's just because that's the way they are. And now you can kind of accept that mm-hmm. and just honestly be happy about it. Like right. not be upset, not go home and think about it and be like, they they must not like me as a person. Mm-hmm. You know, none of those ideas come into your head anymore because you understand these two personality differences. Mm-hmm. So, and, sure. and I liked that, that Dalton said, you know, they have to work together. They both have to work together in order for everything to fit. They have to coexist. And yeah, they have to coexist. And everything has to play its role. And in order for... I don't know, the world to keep going. Mm-hmm. We balance each other out. We like yep. to use that term all the time. Um, that's pretty much the conclusion. Now yep. for the fun part. Make sure you follow us 
on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Check out that blog, son. Cody's posting shit. We got extroverts versus introverts. If you want to look at the blog for more information, check that out at younglife. Dot, wait, younglifeperception.wordpress.com. Mm-hmm. This is also going to be on YouTube. If you want to check it out there, YouTube channel. Pretty sure it's. You can just type in Young Life Perception and find it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll also have links for it. Check all over out the place. younglifeperception.com. It's a newly made website that we just got up. Once again, that's younglifeperception.com. We want some feedback on it. If you could send us an email, that'd be awesome. Remember, check out our contest video. You have a chance to win a free amplifier. Hell yeah. We don't have the music to go along to bump. with it. I'm trying to bump. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check That's out our contest. It. It's a uh, win free prize podcast contest, I think the name of it is. And uh, there's rules in a blog that we have, too. Mm-hmm. There's rules below the video. And basically, we'll be doing it here live on Ustream, the drawing, August 26th. Mm-hmm. So you still have some time, but not a whole lot of time. Make sure you check that shit out. Pretty much done. That's all I got. Call to action. Find a new ex- introvert friend. Find a new extrovert friend if you're an introvert. Try and use this information in your daily life. Go out. Go to work. Go to the store. Do whatever you do. And just try and spot out extroverted people and introverted people. And once you start getting good at it, you're going to have a whole new spin on how the world works. And make sure... I wasn't recording on Audacity. But make sure you let us know. That's what I was going to say. Make sure you let us know. Go to younglifeperception.com and be like, hey, I listened to what you guys said and I found an example and I want to tell you about it. I would love to read examples about it. That's how I learn. So Mm -hmm. send us your interactions with other people and how it went and whether or not it worked or it didn't work. And if you have any questions, Cody and I will always be willing to share our knowledge with you. All right. I was going to say. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Let's end this shit, boys. (laughs) We are the Young Life We're going to go get get drunk and party our asses (laughs) off and be extrovert, bitches, because they're the best. I just had to say that. Jesus Christ. (laughs) All right, man. We're out. Peace. We are the Young Life Perception. Yeah, buddy. See you later.